what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually cut a wing very similar to this wing. This one's actually been coated by paper. I cut a, one earlier out of the lightweight, uh, the lighter weight, low density foam. These seem to work better. I'll show you how to do that. I've got a template. You'll notice that I've cut out of eighth inch uh, plywood. I've ran this before, so it's getting a little burnished on the end of it, but it still works fine. I've screwed it in to the styrofoam. You don't screw it in very tight. It doesn't need to be in very tight. All it needs to be done is snug. And then you have to set it up on your table. I've got a uh, Luan door with a screw tied in at the end with a piece of nichrome wire attached to it. That nichrome wire, you can see, is when I pull it, I can pull it relatively tight. It'll cut somewhat straight. As I place my wing on there, because I have a point out at infinity, I can actually alter it how wide I want the wing, how deep I want the wing. And I take one of the existing wings, put right over the top, and my vanishing point, as we call it, needs to line up straight down the wire. As it does that, the other side can be brought over here straight down the wire as well. Now in this case, the wing has been sanded, so it's a little bit smaller than that. We'll sand them both. To the, both wings are exactly the same. It's not going to be a problem. Once you decide that you've got your wing about where you want it to be, and that looks like it's fine. It'll give me a little bit of material to sand off. I'm good with that. I need to put something heavy enough on top of that styrofoam that it doesn't move like that. I also need to be able to see what's going on here relative to my template. Once I've got that done, I can now go ahead and cut it off using the uh, foam cutter that I showed how to do in the other video. The foam cutter doesn't need to be activated completely. I've already got it plugged in, so all I need to do is just connect on to my alligator clips. Once those are activated, they'll drag I'm going to move that back a little bit further. I can drag them along through. The only part that's going to be activated and going to be hot is the section between the wires. So once I've got that activated, it'll start to heat. Now, if I stand a little bit out of the way here, you're going to notice it'll start to smoke. And as soon as it starts to smoke, then it's ready to go. I need to make sure that my alligator clips flat so that they don't get stuck on that. Now when I cut these, I let it flow at its own pace. You'll notice that it's starting to flow now at its own pace. It'll cut right on into there. You're also going to notice that I'm going to take it right up against the center of that wing, and then I'm going to go underneath it first. Pulling at its own pace, and I want to keep the wire tight so that it takes out the imperfections in the wire. Any kinks, etc., will show up in your wing, and you don't want any kinks at all, if at all possible. Now I'm lifting up slightly on the uh, template. As soon as I come to the end, however, I want to come out straight with it. And I want to go all the way out straight with it. If you don't, and if you don't keep it level, it'll end up messing up the other end. Continue to pull. Okay, now once I've got it through, I come back, reset my equipment, same way that I did, only this time I'm going to go over the top of it instead. So I take my wire, keeping pressure on it with the one side, I follow exactly the same cut on the inside. As soon as I get next to where it's at, I proceed up over the top of the template instead of the bottom of the template. Now I pull down slightly closer to the table so that it keeps down onto the template. I can actually help it. Like I said before, the only part of this that's hot is the section between the alligator clips. So I proceed through to them. Now after I leave the template, I want to follow the exact same flat section out. I can watch it down the side there as it proceeds out. Now I'm done, I can disconnect my wire, my wire will start to cool off. Doesn't take long for the wire to cool off. 
Once it's cool, I can set that down, let it continue to cool. Pull the weight off. And what I have now, you can see I can open it right up. You can see the wing pulls right out. If I compare that against the wing that I have, it's got the same paper. It's a little bit longer, that's all right. I'm going to sand it and cut it off so it's exactly the same size anyway. I can cut my dihedral into it using sandpaper. It sands up very, very easy. It's a little thicker right there. If I really want to, I can nip that off. and I can. It's just as easy at this point to nip that off with a knife as it is to do it with a hot wire. But now we've got ourselves. This stuff will come right off. Looks like insulation, but it isn't. It doesn't itch. And I've got a wing. It looks relatively well. Now it's a little bit sharp along this edge because I uh, didn't give it enough time, but based on the fact that my wing is still quite large, a little bit oversized, I can sand that along there to match this other wing exactly. And in another video I'm going to show you how to sand them. I'm going to show you how to actually coat them. This is just a simple brown paper that you can buy at the hardware store. We'll glue it on there and have ourselves a set of wings. Now something you need to remember to do if you're making a set of wings, I put this on this direction, the next one, I'm going to put my screws in from this side so I cut that wing. That way I have a matched pair of wings that I can adjust my dihedral on and the curl is the same top and bottom. Now this is uh, not a fully symmetrical wing anyway, slightly semi-symmetrical, but I want the bottom on both of them to be the same cut. As the, as the top to be different but the same as the other wing. And we've now cut ourselves a foam wing. Now you'll notice how flimsy that looks. Once you get the paper on them, they are significantly stronger. Now I've also cut out larger wings. Here's one out of the low density foam and you see how flimsy that appears. Once I get the paper on that, that's the same wing, significantly tougher. I overlap a little bit of my paper, but I also have some of the sheetrock fiberglass tape. You can buy that at the hardware store, comes in nice little rolls, roll it off, put that underneath it, and that just takes all the flex completely out of those wings. I hope you'll try this. It's an inexpensive way to make wings. They're pretty tough, ranging all the way from some 3D planes to the little park flyers, great ones. Eventually I'm going to make a set of wings for a B-17. Those things are going to be over four feet long each. We'll have just as good a success with those as we do with the small ones. Enjoy!